One way of measuring correlation between two variables is when the variables themselves are ranks or positions of something in an order. And we then work out what's called Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. So let's look at this example. Here we have eight students, A, B, C, D, up to H, and these are their positions in successive years. At the end of the first year, student D was top, students A and F shared second place. If, we'd had, if they'd been separate, we'd have had second and third, but because they're tied, we split that ranking between them, so we call each of them at rank two and a half, E was fourth, uh, G was fifth, and so on. That was at the end of the first year. We don't have their actual scores in their exam results, we just have their positions. Then at the end of the second year, the positions had changed slightly. Uh, F was now top, having been equal second the year before. D had gone down from top to second. Uh, A had gone to third from equal second, and so on. C had come up from 6th place to 4th place, and so on with the rest of them. We could plot these on a scatter diagram, and we'd, we'd guess we'd get quite a good correlation, because you'd expect positions to be related. If you're good one year, you're probably going to be pretty good the second year. But Spearman invented a formula for calculating a correlation coefficient, and we usually call it rho, and the formula is 1 minus 6 times sigma d squared over n times n squared minus 1. Now let's see what that means. n is the number of people, number of items, in our case 8. But the key thing is sigma d squared. d is the difference in ranking between the two successive measurements. So we can put this here, 2.5 minus 3 is, is minus a half. We're going to square it, so we won't bother with the minus signs. They'll disappear when we square anyway. So this difference is a half. 7 minus 6 is 1. 6 minus 4 is 2. 1 minus 2, the difference is 1. 5 minus 4, the difference is 1. 2.5 take away 1 is 1.5. One 5 take away 8, the difference is 3, 8 take away 7, the difference is 1. So that gives us d. Sigma means we want to add up all the d squareds. So if we now do d squared, we get a quarter. Half times a half is a quarter. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 1 squared, 1 squared. 1 and a half times 1 and a half is 2 and a quarter. 3 squared is 9 and 1 squared is 1. And we have to add those up. We want the total of that column, which comes to, quickly, 19.5. So the sum of all the d squareds is 19 and a half. We put that in this formula. So we get 1 take away 6 lots of 19 and a half, and then we divide by n, the number of items, we've got 8, times n squared, 8 squared is 64, take away 1. So I work all of that out, I get 0 0.2321, and that gives me a correlation coefficient of 7679. That's the numerical measure of the correlation. And the general idea is that if you have perfect correlation, perfect positive correlation, rho will equal plus 1. And if you have perfect negative correlation, you will get a score rho equals minus 1. The correlation coefficient is always between plus 1 and minus 1. But the nearer to plus 1, the more perfect the positive correlation. 
So we've got 0.76. That says there is substantial positive correlation between these two sets of results. And that means, for example, that how you do in year one is in general quite a good predictor of where you'll end up in year two because the two sets of results have good positive correlation. Okay, Marie, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.